Hello guys, my name is Theo Costa and for this video and for this video series, we're in a different environment. For those who've watched my channel for the last couple of months, you should know that I've only been looking at really Python. I've not really explored any other IDEs apart from Python IDLE and any other uh, program languages. But this all changes with this video series. In this video series we're going to be looking at C Sharp, another a language that I'm familiar with. Um, C Sharp for the families which make up the C family. And it is a fantastic language in being able to uh, being able to do stuff with Windows. <laughs> um, C Sharp was a language created by Microsoft, no one that's gonna work in Windows. Uh, Visual Basic's also another one. Which they've all have they all uh, contain the .NET framework. This is a framework created by my Microsoft, and it makes programming and coding in Windows or manipulating Windows or coding on Windows, or however you wish to say, much much easier. Um, and for this video, we're going to look at text to speech. And what makes C Sharp great at doing this is because with the .NET framework, we're able to actually use the Microsoft Speech Narrator, not having to create our own speech narrator, just to use the Windows Speech Narrator to just speak with what, uh, just just speak what, what you want to say, really. What, what, whatever we give it to, we can just tell her to speak, or him, uh, not being sexist. And now, see, instead of uh, instead of me, the program, having to create my own narrator, I can just use Microsoft, plop in Microsoft, and there we go. Which is great, you know. So let's let's begin by saying file, new, and project. Visual Studio is a great uh, IDE. It's fantastic. It's got excellent debuggers created by Microsoft as well. I .e. the name is Microsoft Visual Studio. So it's on the tin. Um, there are a range of programming languages you can write in in Visual Studio: C Sharp, Visual Basic, C plus plus, F Sharp, SQL, JavaScript. Um, and sometimes you can actually get more. You can get Python to also go on with, with, Visual, with Visual Studio. Uh, I like to use C Sharp. Um, with the Visual Studio, you can create apps for both Windows devices, that includes Xbox, tablet, and phone. You can also create desktop apps, which is what we'll be doing today, and also console if you wish. Um, you can also do Android stuff and iOS. We probably will be looking at Android stuff in a later video, and also uh, Windows. Uh, as well, window for tablet and stuff, and we'll probably at some point do SQL stuff. Um, so let's begin by going to Windows Classic Desktop, and we will select over here a Windows Form app, and we're going to call this Project Speech. So we're going to create up over here the project, and it's going to dump us into a page with a form over here, allowing us to design. This is very different to Python, uh, the idea I. IDLE, or whatever it's called. Um, a lot of the, uh, when you come in Python, you're doing a lot of console stuff. C Sharp and Visual Studio allow you to actually design your GUIs. You can do console if you wish, but you can also design it if you wish. Design GUIs if you wish. Here, you've got a bunch of things over here. And what we're going to do is we're going to get up over here a text box. We're going to plot the text box over here. We're going to say multi line. We're going to drag it. It's so easy. We don't have to program any of this. Visual Studio does all the coding for us. It's great. Python. And over here, we're just and we can label stuff like this. So we can come with a text. I'm gonna say there speak. And we can make this bigger. Saying this. A bit bigger, mate. 26. Oh, that's okay, that will do. And I'm going to refer to this in the program, we're not going to refer to it as button, we're going to refer to as speak button. That's what we're going to refer to, we're going to put, put a save there. What we're also going to do, this icon, I love it so much, is if you if you double click on speak, it automatically creates you the code for a click event handler. So this, in case of an, a click, Run this. Whatever I put in these brackets, whatever I type of it, it will do if the speak button is pressed or clicked. There's there's also a bunch of other event handlers. If you click on this lightning bolt, there is a bunch of other event handlers over here. That's great. And then this Visual Studio is all free. It's this the community version is all free. There are professional and stuff. That's if you're going to be if you have a lot bigger teams. If it's you individually, you can create products and sell them. But if you are business, that that are the products which you have to pay for. Um, 
It also allows you to have great features about working, or you can all work in a project at the same time and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, so there's tons of uh, things you can do there. Oh, if, you're, if your mouse enters or leaves the uh, vicinity of the button, you can do stuff like that. Um, this is the... Uh, yeah, see, mouse hover, mouse enter, mouse leave, if you're just hovering over the button. If the background color changed, so if you if somewhere in your code the background color changes the button, this can fire, okay, flag, run this in case this happens. Uh, if the location changes, run this in case the button location changes. Cool. Bunch of things you can do. So, when the button's pressed, what we want to do is we want to actually create our speech. Uh, it, with with C-Shop, it's all about object-oriented programs. So you want to create a new object. This will be the speech or the, the speech thingy, what Microsoft calls it, the speech synthesizer. But before we do that, we must import the, D, the DDL file, uh, DLL file, and that is speech, which is Google, speech, system speech. Okay, we can then start using or importing using system.speech.synthesis. Colon, semicolon. So what we can say now here is we can say here, speech synthesizer ss equals a new speech synthesizer. We're going to create a new, we're going to instantiate a new speech synthesizer. What we're going to do with this? We're going to say ss dot. We're going to do ss dot speak. Oh, and there's two things you can do. You can do speak synchronously speaks the contents of a string, or you can do speak async asynchronously speaks the contents of a string. It's better to pick async because if you do sync, speak, um, you can't do, you can't, there can't be any other code running while it's speaking, but you might want other code running while it's speaking. So it's better to do speak async. Now, we now must tell it what to speak. It's complaining, no overload for this method. You have given me no argument. So what we want to say is we want to say, okay, so we want you to speak wherever the text box one is. Now we didn't give a name for this, but it's automatically said, okay, you haven't given me a name, we're just gonna say, okay, we're gonna give it what what this is, a text box, plus one. If you had more text boxes, we'll go to text box two, text box three. But since we only have one text box, we don't really have to change the name. Um, text box one dot text dot two string. And we're gonna do this in case there's any numbers and stuff. We're gonna say two string. It's quite simple. Boom. And of course, if you don't want the text, there's other things you can get. You can get the text length, the text line, te the tab index, the, the size, the sh show, the select. There's just a bunch of things. This is the list of things you can do with the text box one. And see, some of them are, so you got the, some of them are properties, some of them are events, and some of them are methods. So you've, here you've got your properties, here you've got your events, and you've also got methods. Dot two string, you can see if it's a method or not. Firstly, you can tell if it's got brackets. Secondly, if you put dot, put dot two string, you can see it's got the little cube, so it's a method. And also you need the brackets. So if we just run this, let's see what happens. Control F5, that runs it without debugging. Um, there's no need to debug this program since it's a small program. It'll be much more useful to debug when you have larger programs. It can be hard to find debug yourself, errors yourself, or the, the system, or the ID, or the IDE itself might find it difficult to find any bugs. So it's created the .exe file. This is another great thing about Visual Studio. It automatically creates the .exe files for you. So let's have in hello. Let's see speak. Hello. So yes, you did hear that. Uh, hopefully you did hear that. Let me say, no, I'm going to click on speak again. Hello. Um, so yeah. Nothing, nothing special, right? Shist, fist, fi, sud, fist, yuv. What? Let's see how it tries some money. Hello, my name is Diogo. <laughs> okay. So... That is the that's the speech narrator already, but you can do much more things, and that's what we're going to do right now. So we're going to modify a few things. So we're going to move this up a bit because we're going to get his now is we're gonna, no we, let's not use that. No. Aha, trackbar. That's the sort of thing I want. There we go. Let's use this. Let's use this again. Let's use this trackbar, and this is going to become the volume bar. 
the end of the design. No, it's not in the design. Hold on. Where's the design? Oh, yes. I was like, volume bar. So that's going to become the volume bar. And what we want to do is when we, when we actually load up this application, what we want to say, we'll say here, volume bar dot. What we can do, we can do a bunch of things over here. And do set. So we're going to do set bounds and set range. So I guess the range we can put over here, we can put over here. It's between, it's between 0 and 100. That's the range, right? The volume is 0 to 100, and Windows at 0 to 100. So we'll set over here the range. Now we could, could we also do this over here? Let's see. So we can say over here, yeah, we can. 0 and 100. So we don't need, so we can either do it programmatically or we can just do it over here in the properties. So we don't need this code over here. But if we wish to change it later in our program, we can. If we wish to change uh, the range, it's the length of, we can somewhere else in the program. But we don't need to, since we can just do it all over here. So we've set the range. Now we've got over here, tab, we've got over here the tab index. So if I was to uh, run this quickly, we see here, so the tab index, what does that do? It determines the index and the tab order that this will occupy. It doesn't really sound what we want, really. If there's an error, what's the error? Uh, unable to copy. We cannot have the program running. We must close that. But now we can add it. So over here, scroll thing. What else to go here? So we've got the enabled large change. I see we to change stuff with up and down value. So kind of it sits. It can't. It sits at the value zero. Let's put it as value fifty. We want to start always at value fifty. Maybe. Then what we want to see over here. Right, well, actually over here, because the speech synthesizer is generated over here. So let's do it over here. So here we want to say, okay, so let's do uh, volume bar dot set, not set to the value, value equals ss dot volume. Yeah, let's do that. What volume, because I'm interested to know what is the volume. So let's say, hello. Hello. So it's at the max volume. So it automatically puts at the max volume. Okay. Cool. That's that's good to know. Yeah, so it's automatically at the max volume. What else can you do? You can do more stuff. So what we could do is we could get rid of the speak button. And let's create some more. But for now, we're not going to get rid of it, I don't think. What we are going to do instead is we're going to change here. We're going to make this a bit more bigger. We're going to move this down, actually. What we are going to do is we're going to put... So we're going to create here a list box. What we're going to say over here is we're going to say this is the voice box. I'm going to say over here is what we're going to put here. So if you say over here s s dot s s dot dot, uh, it should be a voice dot. So there, there are a couple of things that exist. Now, I don't know what all the voices are, but we can actually find out what they are. If I do a message box up show, I, I would be able to do, actually over here, we could say over here, ss dot voice, we could say select voice, but we don't know exactly all the names, do we? We don't know the names of the voices. So we need to get a list of the names of the voices. ss dot so we could say over here um, voice dot get get installed voices all right get me all the installed voices now what's it compiling there cannot convert meta method group to string so we can't so we can't seem seemingly get everything so all of the things but what we can do here is we can say here string dun dun and say voices what installed voices equals ss dot get called voices. Can we do that? Hmm. So it it cannot seemingly convert it. So what we have to do then is we have to create a for loop. And if you double tap it, it does this for you. 
this this thing over here. But this is usually for the counter loop and the counter. So it's usually when you loop through this, then you're also doing the counter plus one stuff like that. But for this, we're going to say over here installed voice, which is own like data type or whatever you want to call it, class. It's own thing. It's own type. Yeah, just a data type. Okay. It's own type. Voice in. And we're going to say dot get in the get installed voices. So method. Over here, we're just going to say we're just going to say the message box. Actually, we don't. We won't do message box. What we do instead, actually, we do a for each because we want to look for each for for everything. So instead of having for loop, and like in Python, you have a for loop and you have to do the indexes. You can just say for each and just every single thing. No problem. Uh, we call this voice box. So just over here, voice box, voice box dot add. Is it dot? We don't have an add. Therefore, it's what dot. It's not in. It's not in. dot items. Dot add. Yes. Dot items. Dot add. And you can just save it. Dot add. Voice. Is it going on playing? Let's make. Let's do true string. There we go. Just in case. Just in case there's any numbers and stuff. It's just let's do. And I must close this program. I must close that. Okay. Hello. Hello. Two of them. There's two, but there's no description of it. You gave me two, but where the, where the hell's the description? There's no description. So this is not exactly useful, is it? The get installed voices. It's just not useful. It's, you don't provide me with good information about it. Um, so what can we do about this? What information can we get? Well, I'm sure we could get at least some information. Come on. Voice dot. Can we get some information? Dot voice info. Dot and ah, uh, if if we just actually read what it says here, get get information about voice such as culture, name, gender, and age. We might actually be able to get something of it. Dot voice info. Dot. Can we get name? We can get name. And then let's can we can do a two string on this. So let's copy that instead. Let's not just say voice because that's just going to copy what the data type is. Let's do voice dot voice info dot name dot two string. That's what's great about actually shop. You just do these dots and get information about quite a few, quite a lot of things. Love it. Hello, speak. Hello. Microsoft Hazel Desktop. Microsoft Zero Desktop. Apparently. Can I get more information about this? Like so understand how the name is Microsoft Hazel Desktop. Uh, can we get any? Can we get more specific information? Uh, let's see. Here. Voice info dot. What other information can we get? We can get name, ID. ID might be useful. Gender, description, culture, age. Addition. What's this additional info? Gets, gets additional. Okay, what additional info can you get me? Doesn't seem that interesting, mate. But don't seem to see anything of interest there. Okay. <laughs> additional info. No. Description. Let's see what's the let's see what the description of this voice is then. Maybe maybe you can get that maybe it'll be better if we just get the description, not exactly the name of it. The description might be more useful. So let's say hello. Let, then let's press the speak button. Hello. So English Great Britain and English United States, that's more useful for us. So we know now which one? Zero and Hazel. Hazel, I don't know. Hazel, Hazel, I think it's Hazel. Um, that's cool. So I'm guessing if we do culture, it's going to do English, Great Britain, English United So what this information? But what's annoying about this is we're going to have to keep on pressing speak to be able to get this information. Also, when you keep on pressing speak, it's creating the object again. It's having to rerun this stuff. That's just a waste of space for it, or a waste of resources. What we could just do is we could just what we could just do is we could just copy this over into the here. Remove we could copy all this into the here so it does all that for us. Then what we can say over here is we can say s dot speak but it's complaining. 
So what we could just do is we could just make this a line public. Public and static. Yeah? You just make it public static, no problem. Now if we were to F5 this and we should probably close this application as well. Hello. Hello. No problem. Great, that's all working fantastic. So that's all working fantastic. Right, 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 right. That's all working. Now we want to actually change make some changes to this. So we want one to be selected, of course. So can we do a selected one? Automatic. Can we have selected? Sorted, we could sort it if we wanted to. Selection mode one. Can we have one selected? Can we or can we not? Is there no chance of having one selected? Okay, we're gonna have to do this programmatically then. Wastebox.items. No. Wastebox.selected index equals zero. So now if we were to run it, the first one's automatically selected. And what that means is when we come over here, always when you come over here and press click, SS dot voice. Select a voice. And now over here it wants the string name. Now can we just give it can we just give it its description? Does it have to be? It's can we just say voice box dot selected dot selected item dot well actually let's do selected index dot no selected item to shrink. I do that. Yeah, no problem, just need a semicolon there. Need a semicolon there. That did not input a semicolon. A semicolon there, there we go. Now let's try to run this. Hello. Right, we've got a message. No matching voice installed. Okay. So it wants the name of it, but we've given this description. Great, we're gonna have to try and find it now. We have to try and find it. Great. Right, but if I just, I can just quickly just message box this dot show to just see what does it, what, what is the value? What's this value? So yeah, so it's exactly the text. But that's not its name. That's what's bad about it. So what we need to do is we need to be able to get we need to be able so what we need to do is we need to get the voice. So what we need to get is installed voice, but we want to get the name of it and not the uh, installed voice, i.e. the current voice is equal to the voice box of two strings. So that's the current voice. Complaining about that. Can't explicitly convert a string. Okay. What we have to do then is we have to save it here. Installed voice. So I have to do this. Let's just start get. Can I at all get anything? Can I input anything in there? Culture. Ah. We could get all the voices to match that culture, but we can't really put anything in there. Get type. Can I do that? No. I guess it has the current instance. That's not exactly what we want, is it? Um, select voice. By name, it's Hmm. That's like selecting it by name, which we select by hint slash on a specific gender. Hmm. Huh. 
security dot no. Try to think of how to do this thing. Select that doesn't work. Uh, can I do this? Voice info. Hmm. I'm complaining. So what what's it take? I don't <laughs> Can I take this? No. That's not gonna work. Um one thing you can actually I thought I could create a dictionary of these actually. I can't be here, I can actually create a dictionary. Uh, dictionary here, we can do this all. Just voice info, voice info. Yes. Uh, voice dict equals new dictionary voice info. Semicolon. We can do this maybe over here. Let's see here. Voice dot it's info dot name to string. We don't really need the dot to string to be honest. We don't exactly need it, I don't believe. So just complaining there. Cannot convert. Mm. Let me just call it a string then. See, it even thinks it's a string itself. It's a string then. So we can create a dictionary of these, and what we can say over here is we could then loop through the dictionary, so what we can say over here is then actually we add all this to the dictionary, so then we can actually begin as a looping of all the dictionaries um, and then put them into the list that's what we can do actually instead so over here So you save it. Again, tab again for um for each for each voice each voice info or for each voice hair info hair in the voice dictionary. I would like to I like to do is over here voice box dot items items dot add into voice items dot add now to add is the voice with info pair now to add is the description which will be the dot value the key is the name and then what we can do is get the name by the value Value. Cool. So we do that, so that should work. So if we just sort of close that, of course, this will crash. No, not crash, this will cause an error. If we go to F5, this, yeah, so look, same thing, just expand this a bit so we can have greater access, we have greater information, we can store, we're storing more information, which is great. Um, now we are able to now obtain. The actual, uh, the actual thing. If you're to be a string, should be able to, we can say we're a string. Um, voice name is equal to the is equal to the. Oh, this is not actually. The issue with this is that this is not. Actually, I'll, I'll be able to access. Actually, forget it. Forget, I'll be able to access it. So, no way. Uh, if I get here, string selected voice equals the voice box dot select to string selected voice 
get it dot first or default. Show to the uh, uh, so I'm not sure to the x x equals greater than x dot value. Sure. No, that's wrong. Isn't it? I want the dictionary, but I won't be able to get it. I knew I was going to get this issue, wasn't I? Yeah, it doesn't exist in current context. Because he's not private. Mm. <laughs> well, this is public, but this is private, which is bloody annoying. But what I can do actually is I can say here public and create as a public. We can create a public. We can create a public a voice. We can create a public dictionary. So we can just continue this. So I don't have to do this over here. And then I should be able to access that dictionary, no problem. Yeah, so x dot value, cool. I'm going to access the x dot value. And if the value is equal equal now to the to the selected voice. Two string. Well I've done that. String, so I should write dot key. So actually, I don't actually need this because I've already actually done the two string. You know what? I think I think I can be exaggerated from the two string. I don't, I don't think I need to do the two string. Oh yeah, and then well, we should fix that later. We'll fix that. We'll fix that soon. Hold on. Uh, DFSFSFSDF. Now let's change it now. DFSFSFSDF. Yes, it is now working as we want it to. Now, uh, when I maximize this, it, it it made the window bigger, but it did not move along with it. So we can actually change that. What we can do over here, so we come down, we can anchor it. So it does this actually now. So if I was to, oops, not that button. Next time close that. Just anchor it. So now it does that. Uh, let's do that also to, to let me get up the form again. Like that. This is this is the pro, this is the generated code. So Windows Form Designer generated code. Zoom in. And it is all the code that's generated for me. Thank you. Thank you, Visual Studio, for doing that on my behalf. Imagine having to do that. Um, that'd be a pain. Um. Where's the anchor? Can't you anchor this? Oh yeah, you can. Of course. I'm thinking that's a bit weird. You can't anchor it. What? <laughs> F5. There we go. The volume's not gone with it. We can also do this over here. Let's anchor. And the, and the speak. Let's do. What's the speak? Has remained over here. Maybe we can, maybe we can push, can we push this down maybe a bit more bigger, maybe. Oh, no, do that, don't do that. Keep that there. Yeah. This is going to be a big bun. If I was to do it, it's going to become a big bun. Yeah, a long one. You like a big one, not a long one. That's what she said. Um, so, uh, Let's move the list box down actually instead. So, oh, but then does that. Let's do that. Just stays in the middle. That's not exactly good, is it? Or if we just anchor it down. Does that. Anyway, so that'll be it for today's episode. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed.
and I hope to do more videos like this. Goodbye.